Meet six-year-old Jaziel Cho. Were you scared of the needles? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's your favorite food? I, I heard you and your dad talking about going for burgers in, uh, after the, you, you finished speaking with us. Is, that, is burgers one of your favorite foods? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Okay. With meat. If you don't know his backstory, you'd think that he's just another lively and energetic child. But at this time, little Jaziel is the Belize Cancer Center Dangriga's youngest cancer survivor. Today, he joined the short list of the facility's other patients to ring this special bell, which signals that his cancer has entered remission, where it will hopefully remain. With Jaziel ringing the bell today, it's like, um, it's, it's a part of me is a relief that um, we got out of the shady part, but I know that it's not it's not to just let my guard down. At the tender age of three and a half, Jaziel was diagnosed with one of the different forms of leukemia or cancer of the blood. Like I have a headache, like, a, like, I, like, I feel, like I feel sick. Jaziel's parents tell us that his extended struggle with leukemia has taxed them mentally and emotionally. His father vividly remembers how the complication of restricted travel due to COVID was a major challenge in getting him the medical care he needed. I remember uh, we were frequently up and down with, with hospital visits because uh, he would constantly uh, have fever, he would have bruises around his hands, complain about headaches or just randomly crying. And, and, and so, you know, we were scared. We never knew what was the, what was the situation. Um, and, and, and we couldn't find any answers. The only thing they always told us was that he was probably anemic and needed um, farther, in, you know, farther studies. Uh, we, we tried everything here we can. We, we, we tried vitamins, we tried um, finding other you know, home remedies to try to help. But in the end, uh, it, never, um, it never got better. Um, it, it got to a point that um, on one occasion, he was um, playing with one of his bicycles and he fell. Uh, like a month later, he was complaining of a pain, and next thing we knew, he had to take a surgery because his uh, it, they found an infection on his femur bone. And I think this was the initial. Uh, this this was what initiated the the, the actual um, disease to start present itself. So right after this operation, his uh, platelets started to fail. His uh, blood count started to drop, and 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 he needed constant uh, blood transfusion, and we were in and out almost every week, every 15 days. He got diagnosed with lymphoblastic leukemia. Now, uh, for me, it was something new. I never knew what it was, so I asked him, you know, what, what is, the, um, what, what is, what is the, the, the worst case scenario that can happen with someone with this, with this, um, with this disease? And so um, he immediately explained that uh, this is a cancer of the blood and that uh, there are chances, but uh, sadly, you know, there are children that don't make it especially on the on this initial initial start of the treatment because that is where the the, the heaviest uh, chemo is administrated uh, so at this point I know Jaziel was really weak because we had been so much time without um, w without trying to, 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 to find help right and so my biggest fear was that um, he would not handle the treatment um, as I would like it to and um, to probably like a month after he initiate, initiated the treatment, he got intoxicated. Uh, again, he gets in critical condition. There's, uh, he's all hooked up. And uh, we had to wait, I think, about three months for him to actually get back to normal. There were some times I really thought that would have been his last night with us. And, and, and me being there alone because mom had to stay back home trying to make fundraisers and, and, and maintain home here while I was there with Jaseel. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's, it's an experience that I wouldn't want anyone to, you know, go through. It's totally different, totally different. No, he's <laughs> happy. I see him super happy, different way. <laughs> and what was he like when, when um, the leukemia was at its worst, what was that like? Hmm. It was so strong. It was hard. Like hmm. I can't explain the way how you see him. It wasn't a good sign. I feel like I 
will lose my child. This family is also very grateful to the Belize Cancer Center Dangriga and the Belize Cancer Society, a partnership that has significantly reduced the medical expenses for little Jazelle's treatment. Instead of traveling to Merida every week, which would have crippled their finances, Jaziel and his parents need only show up to the Belize Cancer Center Dangriga. Through a partnership between the Belize organizations and a specialist hospital in Merida, Mexico, the pediatric oncologist can have virtual doctor visits to get updates on his status. Also, his weekly chemotherapy is handled by the staff of the Belize Cancer Center Dangriga, as per the instructions from the Mexican doctors. On Tuesdays are unique days for the kids. And so every Tuesday, the kids, the kids receive those kids battling with cancer that are part of our patient um, volume. They receive weekly treatment for the duration of their time here. So essentially what is going on today is uh, as a result of a joint coalition between Belize Cancer Center, Dangriga, and um, another uh, specialist hospital in Merida. Ideally, the kids would have been going to Merida every week to access this care. But this is where Belize Cancer Center Dangriga intercepts that uh, travel hustle okay. by becoming the extension of the Merida. Yeah, Merida care. So we would, we would now receive the direct prescription from Merida and then we will facilitate the kids receiving the chemotherapy agents accordingly every week. I wish that uh, if any other parent would be stuck in that situation they know that there are answers and and, and they don't please don't stop to try to uh, investigate or try to research because the scariest part is researching something you don't know and you don't want um, you, you don't want to know what is the, the the worst case scenario right that's like that's just everyone's fear reporting for seven news daniel ortiz